Rap Race Part 2, The Murder of Biggie Smalls, 1997. Please subscribe my channels. Christopher George Lador Wallace quit school at the age of 17 and never went back. The teenager was born in Brooklyn and raised in the Bedford Stuyvesant section of New York. He was a good student, winning English prizes at Queen of All Saints Middle School. He began selling drugs when he was about 12 years old, while his mother taught preschool during the day. She had been raising her son alone since Wallace's father walked out on the family when her son was two years old. Wallace's life as a drug dealer led to his arrest in 1989 for carrying an unregistered firearm, and he received five years probation. In 1991 he was charged with dealing cocaine in North Carolina and spent nine months in jail waiting to make bail. While Wallace earned money by selling drugs out of a garbage can on Fulton Street, he indulged in his passion for rap by making tapes in a basement on Bedford Avenue. Copies of his music began circulating among people in the neighborhood, and one tape found its way into the hands of producer Sean, Puffy, Combs, president of record label Bad Boy Entertainment. Combs promised to make Wallace a star. Wallace, who went by the stage names of Notorious B.I.G. and Biggie Smalls, burst onto the rap scene with the release of his first album Ready to Die on September 13, 1994, in the single Juicy. The album, which drew on his experience as a crack dealer on Fulton Street, sold more than a million copies. In December 1995, he was named Rap Artist of the Year at the Billboard Music Awards. The name Biggie Smalls was inspired by a character in the 1975 Sidney Poitier film Let's Do It Again. Smalls mentored neighborhood rap group Junior MAFIA and helped them record and release their first CD in 1995, Conspiracy. He also became the executive producer of Kim Lil Kim Jones's debut solo album Hardcore in 1996. At six foot, three inches tall and weighing nearly 300 pounds, Smalls appeared to be larger than life. He married singer Faith Evans on August 4, 1994, soon after meeting her at a photo shoot for Bad Boy Entertainment, the record label to which both were signed. About a year later, the duo were on the charts for their separate careers. The number one single was Smalls's One More Chance, while Evans grabbed the number six spot with You Used to Love Me. Their son, Christopher Wallace Jr., was born on October 29, 1996. The marriage was rocky, however, and Smalls reportedly had an affair with Lil' Kim Jones. Despite the fact that Smalls was successful and had left his drug-dealing past behind, he continued to fear that his life was in danger. It was a sentiment that he had been unable to shake from his past. He kept two 9mm Rugers under the mattress of his bed. In 1994, rappers Tupac Amaru Shakur and a member of Wu-Tang were shot in what appeared to be attempted robberies, and these incidents did little to assuage his fears. The appearance of Smalls on the rap scene and his success prompted a rivalry between him and West Coast rapper Shakur, who was with the Death Row label. That rivalry was further fueled by Shocker's shooting on November 30, 1994. He was shot four times and robbed of $40,000 worth of jewelry in the lobby of the Quad Recording Studios off New York City's Times Square. Shakur accused Smalls of being involved, but there was no evidence. In 1995, Smalls released the single Who Shot Yo, which was a reference to Shocker's shooting. The following year, Shakur released Hit Em Up, which attacked East Coast artists, including Smalls. In retaliation, he also claimed to have slept with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans. The brushes with the law that Smalls had had while he was a drug dealer did not come to an end with his rise to fame. On March 23, 1996, Wallace went to the Palladium nightclub on East 14th Street on Manhattan's Lower East Side to watch a performance by his wife, Faith Evans. As he stepped outside the club at about 4.30 a.m., two fans approached him for autographs. An argument ensued, and the two fans hailed a cab and drove off. Wallace and his friend Damian Butler followed behind them in his car. While the two vehicles were stopped for a traffic light at the intersection of Union Square West and 16th Street, Wallace and Butler climbed out of their car and smashed the cab's windows with a baseball bat. The two men were arrested and charged with assault.
In July 1996, Smalls was arrested at his home in Teaneck, New Jersey, along with seven members of his group Junior MAFIA. After searching the house, police found a 9mm pistol with a 30-round clip, two guns with infrared, laser-targeting devices attached, a revolver, and almost 50 grams of marijuana. Smalls faced weapons and drug possession charges. In a civil suit in January 1997, Smalls was ordered to pay $25,000 to a New Jersey man who was beaten up in May 1995 in a dispute over a canceled performance in New Jersey. On the West Coast, Shakur was fatally wounded in a drive-by shooting on September 9, 1996, in Las Vegas. He died in the hospital five days later. Wallace subsequently began recording his next CD. Life After Death was scheduled for release on March 25, 1997. In one of his last interviews, Smalls told a San Francisco radio station that he was worried about his safety because of his high-profile celebrity status. Three days later, on Saturday, March 9, 1997, Smalls was just two months shy of his 25th birthday. He went to a party at the Peterson Automotive Museum on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. The event was thrown by Quest Records and Vibe magazine to celebrate the 11th annual Soul Train Music Awards. The party, whose guests included the who's who of the hip-hop world, was filled to more than capacity with about 1,700 people. The fire department's fire marshal shut it down at 12.35 a.m. when the museum became too crowded. Partygoers poured out of the event and were standing on the sidewalk afterwards. Smalls, Combs, and the rest of their entourage waited for the valet to bring around their vehicles. Combs climbed in beside his driver, and his three bodyguards sat in the back seat. Smalls settled into the passenger seat of a GMC Suburban Sport Utility vehicle along with two other passengers. James Lil Caesar Lloyd, member of the junior MAFIA rap group, and Smalls's best friend Butler. In anticipation of the artist's upcoming release of his second album, his car bore the sticker Think B.I.G. March 25th. They pulled out of the parking garage and drove up to the stoplight at the corner of Wilshire Boulevard in Fairfax. Moments later, a black Impala pulled up to the right of Smalls's vehicle. The lone occupant pulled out an automatic pistol and fired at least five shots into the suburban's passenger side. Smalls slumped forward, blood seeping through his jacket. The shooter sped away. The rap star, who was the only one in his vehicle to be hit, was rushed to Cedars Sinai Medical Center less than five minutes away. He was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m., soon after he had arrived. His death came six months after the drive-by shooting of gangster rapper Tupac Amaru Shakur. He left behind estranged wife Faith, mother Valletta Watson, and a five-month-old son. Smalls's body was returned to New York City, where more than 350 people including music stars Queen Latifah and Lil' Kim attended a private service at the Frank E. Campbell Funeral Chapel at Madison Avenue and 81st Street on the Upper East Side. Afterwards, a motorcade crossed the Brooklyn Bridge. The hearse with Smalls's body dressed in a double-breasted white suit and white hat took a final tour through Clinton Hill in his old neighborhood of Fort Greene. By then, a memorial had sprung up in front of his childhood apartment building on St. James Place. The trip down memory lane was a peaceful affair, except for a brief clash when police arrested ten people after some teenagers jumped up on parked cars in a dumpster on Fulton Street and began to dance once the hearse had passed by. Two weeks later, Smalls's second album, Life After Death, Till Death Do Us Part, was released on March 25, 1997. It debuted in the number one spot on the music charts and sold 690,000 copies in its first week. In advertisements for the record, Smalls was shown leaning against a tombstone in a graveyard. By then, the Los Angeles police had concluded that the killing was not due to a feud between rappers on the East Coast and those on the West Coast. They believed that it was the result of a financial dispute between the rap star and a member of a street gang over a fee for security that they had provided to Smalls during a previous visit to the West Coast. Witnesses gave the police descriptions of the shooter in his vehicle. Investigators had also recovered four spent shell casings from the gun. 
For women visiting Los Angeles for the Soul Train Music Awards phone the television show America's Most Wanted to report that they had inadvertently videotaped Smalls's killer. Police released sketches of the man they believed to be the shooter, based on the descriptions of eyewitnesses. In June 1997, police impounded a Chevrolet Impala that matched the description of the car that was used in the killing, but the leads hit a dead end. Nearly three years later, Combs issued an album of Biggie's previously unreleased material. Born Again appeared on December 7, 1999. A feature-length documentary about Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur was made and released by Nick Broomfield in 2002. In January 2009, the film Notorious was released. It starred Jamal Woolard, a rapper also known as Gravy, as Biggie Smalls. He was raised just a few blocks from the man he depicted on screen. Following a wrongful death lawsuit that Valletta Wallace launched in civil court, six veteran homicide detectives with the Los Angeles Police Department headed a new task force in 2006 to investigate the unsolved killing. Wallace claimed that rogue police officers were involved in her son's murder. The lawsuit ended in a mistrial in 2005 after a police detective hit a jailhouse informant statement that linked two former police officers to the killing. Another civil suit, against the city of Los Angeles, named two Los Angeles police officers. The lawsuit was thrown out in December 2007, but it was reinstated in May 2008. However, the case of who murdered Biggie Smalls remains unsolved.